Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hello everyone, this is Danny Lambert. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a really cool tool. If you haven't heard of it, you really should check it out. Uh, it's called Segment or Segment.io. Um, essentially what the tool allows you to do um, is take all of the uh, web traffic and events uh, from your mobile application, your website, um, cloud apps like your, your uh, CRM system or your marketing automation tool or your web application, um, and then easily pipe all of that information through one API to all of your different destinations. Uh, so as you can imagine, you might want your unique users tracked in your marketing automation tool, in Google Analytics, in Salesforce, uh, in Mixpanel, in a variety of places. And a lot of times it depends on marketers then going to the development team and saying, hey, I need this information to be able to place these ad placements or to be able to see what customer tickets were, re were resolved and a variety of other use cases. Um, and that's really... Uh, where Segment comes into play. Uh, it's essentially a customer data management platform that allows you to just use their API to pipe your, your information from all of your various platforms uh, wherever you need it to go. Uh, so as you can see, their marketing is super clean. Uh, their website essentially goes through the process of explaining how you can uh, pass you know, server-side, client-side, mobile, everything uh, to all of your various tools. And does a very good job of explaining all of that. Uh, they have all the different destinations. So imagine wherever you're collecting the data from, your web application or, or your website, wherever, and then the destination destinations being wherever you're piping that through. So the source being the source of where the event happened and the destination being where you want that to go. Um, so all that is laid out pretty well on their website as well as their pricing. What's really cool about their pricing is they allow you up to 1,000 um, monthly track users for free and up to a certain amount of events, which is really cool of them. It allows you to get your feet wet, like I'll show you here, um, and start to get used to before you have to commit to a paid plan, uh, as well as some other cool product features they have coming out, which are uh, personas, which are going to be super powerful for them in terms of identifying uh, key personas within your buying cycles based on different activities that you track, um, and all of that's going to be coming up really shortly, and it's super cool. Uh, so before we go too far into that, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, so right now, once you log in and create an account, this is what you'll see uh, minus this information right here. And all the process consists of is creating the source where your data is created, where you need that information to go, and then connecting those two together and figuring out what you want to track. So today we'll be tracking my website, plushrepublic.com. So you can see that I've already created the source, which is that site, uh, but I'll go ahead and do it again really quick. Uh, so you come in here, you would click Add Source, uh, you connect it, whether it's a mobile application, server side, whatever the source of the information that you want may be. Um, and you'll go ahead and select that. So I'd click JavaScript. It'll give me some code that I'll put on my site. Um, so I'll click Connect. I'll name that container. So if it was like Plus Republic website, and then I would put in the URL. Once you hit uh, Add Source, it'll then give you the JavaScript code that you need to put on your site. The way that I implemented it was via Google Tag Manager. Uh, I've seen videos from them that, that suggest that you should put it into your hard code and not use a Tag Manager for implementing um, their actual script uh, tag, but you know it's working for me just fine. If you have a little bit more of a complex setup, you may just want to ship it to your source code and not via GTM. Um, but you can see that once I come in here, uh, how I set that up. So I'm just within my Google Tag Manager account. Go to my tags segment. I grab theirs. I do it on all page views, and I just dropped it in. Publish it to my Tag Manager. Put it in preview mode. Make sure everything worked uh, fine, and that's all set up. So once you have that finished, that's where you grab that code from, and you drop it in there. So after that, you're all set up. And at that point, right, you can see I'm actually in as a user, so I'll open up a incognito window. Um, but you can see just with that amount of information, just by putting the tag on your site, you'll already get page tracking information, very similar to what, what GA would do. You can even pipe this information into there. But you'll notice uh, there's this anonymous visitor when I look at the raw data data on my home page. So if I click through to view services, this should then uh, almost in real time alert me that that same anonymous user is now on the services page. So it's tracking all of that, a really good start. So eventually from here, you'll want to start to track more information in terms of if I register as a user, and then if I register as a user, if I add them to the card, I use a coupon code, all the various events and lack of events like page abandonment, whatever, or cart abandonment that you want to track can be pushed through segment 
to every other uh, analytics tool that you can think of for the most part. They have over 200 integrations. Uh, so let's quickly walk through that. So here's my live feed. Uh, just you know, here's the schema of all the different pages, the amount that they've been happening. Once I start tracking users and then identifying them, or sorry, tracking events and identifying users, it'll show me trends over time about how many leads are being tracked in that day, um, all that good information. So if you're seeing lapses in like abandonment or, or um, checkout, all that information will be able to see in like a nice graphical interface here. Or you can go into the analytics tool after that that is that is piping the data into and run your reports there. Obviously, it's it's up to you. So. Uh, at this point, I want to be able to capture a lead. So let's go back to that debugger real quick and see what happens if I convert. Go to contact us and you'll do lar at test.com. And we'll just say lar. Not even sure what that is, but we'll run that. And at this point, it should take that anonymous ID that I've created up to this point. Uh, and then once I submit this form, create me as an identified user and then append all of that previous. Um, tracking information to my newly found user as well as everything that happens after the fact to that same user ID. So let's go ahead and click send. My form has been submitted and boom, there you go. This is it uh, tracking that information. So you have to do a track call, which I'll show you in the documentation, and then an identify, or sorry, identify and, and then track. So now it has seen that this ident anonymous user is now me, Laura at test.com, and appended all of that information. So if I start to move pages from here, and I move back to services, you'll be able to see that when it gets that new page call, now it knows that that belongs to laratest.com. So this is great. You're going to be able to take all the uh, pre-sales uh, funnel, post-sales funnel information, collect all of that, all the different events, and send it through one API to all of your tools. It really is a game changer. Um, and your question that you probably have now is, well, how easy is it to set this up? Because I can imagine I have to talk to a developer to set up all these different events. And uh, Segment just makes it super easy so that that's not the case. Um, so we'll go ahead and show you how I set this up. Um, all I had to do was create uh, an event. So in their documentation, which is very, very strong, sorry, in their spec, it shows you how to identify a user, when to identify them. So if they're logging in from multiple uh, devices, what are best practices around identifying the users, uh, how to pass that information, so this is what we just did, I identified myself, um, what the different track calls are, so if I want to track events after the fact, so like a button click um, or any of that information, you can track those specific events and then associate them with that user, uh, and then the different page views, if you have priority pages like viewed pricing and you want to push that, all of that is su super simple to set up, but don't take my word for it, let's just show you. Um, at this point, I'll go back to the form that I had just submitted and you'll notice this is all the code that I needed to make that um, lead populate. So all this is doing is a, a brief jQuery right here for the contact form uh, with the ID contact form which is this. And then on submit it's just saving uh, the input name uh, your email which is this one here's value uh, to the variable email and then it's pushing that email uh, into analytics that identify which is the nomenclature that segment uses. So it's pushing that as an event with the property email set to the field here and it's tracking that um, as a new lead. So identifying the email and then tracking that as a new lead event in the system. And it's as easy as that. And so now you might be wondering, well, how does that information get into uh, my different uh, marketing automation, analytics, CRM, wherever else you plan to go? It's as simple as the destination setup. So all you'd have to do is click add destination in here and search for one of the hundreds of tools that they have. Uh, mixed panel for analytics, you have AdWords, Facebook, Pixel, all this hot jar for optimization, VWO, um, all the tools that are probably already in your stack are here and the setup is really really simple. So for HubSpot all you do is come in here, you click API key and when you click here it'll show you where you grab that from, copy, paste that in. And then it'll ask for your Hub ID, you'll click this, it'll bring you exactly to the place where you can find that HubSpot ID, copy and paste that in your destination is set up and that is literally the entire setup for you to get your destination uh, squared away. Uh, so for my destinations, let's go ahead and use, I could use any one of these, um, just MailChimp for sake of the argument because a lot of people use that tool. So at this point I would expect that when I log into this dummy MailChimp account that that new user that we just created at laratest.com uh, will be in my list. So you come in and there it is, laratest.com. 
And the beauty of this is now that information is now in every single one of these tools via segment, as well as every activity that I want to track after the fact. If I proceeded after this to go abandon uh, during a funnel, and it'll tell me what page I abandoned on, what my cart value was, and it'll send it to all these different tools at the exact same time, which is one, uh, essentially one line of code or a handful of lines of code. Um, so that's pretty much the extent of the most basic setup for, for a segment. If you want me to create more videos on some of the more advanced topics on what you're able to accomplish with this, please let me know. I'm more than happy to make those. Um, but hopefully this is helpful for you guys, and uh, happy marketing. <laughs>